Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to recreate any of my Adobe Illustrator designs in Inkscape, a free software program. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And right now I have over 60 project videos online. And I always use Adobe Illustrator as my design tool because I belong to the Adobe Creative Cloud and I use their software for a lot of things, including making these videos. But I know that a lot of you don't have access to Adobe, and so you do have access to Inkscape because it's free. So what I've done is I've made a list of all my favorite tools and functions in Illustrator, and I've documented then what they're called and how to use them in Inkscape. In doing this, I've learned that Inkscape also has a lot of the functionality of Photoshop, which is the other piece of software I use a lot, often to process images before I use them in Illustrator to make vector drawings. So I'll talk about how to use that part of the program as well. Uh, you should be able after this to recreate any of the designs you see in one of my tutorials by using Inkscape. First we'll talk about the things you need to do to set up a new drawing. Illustrator has a really nice user interface for pulling up templates for different types of media and things that you've done recently in the past. You have the same templates available in Inkscape. You just have to look a little harder for them. So click on a category, do the drop down and see what the options are there. Now I would use the generic canvas a lot because I would set it to inches and I would set the dimensions to match the material I plan on cutting. Now Illustrator would put that in a new window, but Inkscape puts it in an entirely new document and you have to go through a little bit of setup for that. As for navigating that document, uh, Illustrator has this really nice navigation window where you can make this rectangle bigger or smaller and just move it around the document and get to that location. Inkscape of course has zoom keys, but it also has some icons on the side here that let you zoom to the selection, the drawing, or the full page. I found myself using these icons a lot. Grids are one thing that are much more confusing to use in Inkscape than Illustrator. The first thing you have to do is set up your grid. You can do that in the document properties because I use inches. I set the spacing of the grid to be either a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch based on the thickness of the material I'm going to use. What's confusing is the snap to grid function. There are also settings for that in the document properties, but then there's this whole column of icons down the side here of all different settings for snap to grid. And even after you get those settings right, it doesn't behave exactly the way I expected. So if you draw a rectangle like this and use the tool to pull on the side, you'll see that it's forcing me to go to one of those grid lines, which is what you want. But now when I switch to the direct selection tool, or what they call the node tool here in Inkscape, you see there's only three uh, out of four vertices on this rectangle. And that's because you have to go to path and you have to convert the object to a path before it behaves the way it would automatically behave in Illustrator. And then I can grab these two here on the side, and now when I use my arrow keys to move out, it does not make me snap to the grid. It lets me go to any increment in between. Shapes work a lot like they do in Illustrator. You have rectangles and circles and other multi-sided shape options. The fill and stroke window is where you go to set the colors for both the fill and there's lots of different gradient options for the fill as well. There's multiple ways to work with colors. This color wheel is pretty easy to work with. And then you can do the same thing for the line. And finally, you can set the thickness of the line and some other properties for the line in this section of the window. Now, a tool I use all the time in Illustrator is called Pathfinder. In Inkscape, these are called Boolean functions, and you have to select the two that you're going to work with just as an Illustrator. And here you can see the overlap is actually visible between the two. And then you go to Path on the menu, and here in this block are a bunch of Boolean operators. So Union unites them, and Difference is an example of something I would use all the time. It uh, subtracts the top shape from the back shape. This is called Pathfinder minus Front in Illustrator. The Transform functions are easy to find and powerful. 
the ones used a lot are right up on the toolbar. And then there's a transform window where you can do the more sophisticated transformations. Grouping is available in the right-click menu, but there are also icons for that visible at all times. When you click on the alignment icon, you get the alignment window. And here the align, distribute, and rearrange functions are very powerful. And in fact, I think this is actually more powerful than the same function in Illustrator. I use the pen and pencil tools a lot in my designs. Let's first talk about the pencil tool. That's kind of the freeform drawing tool in both pieces of software. And the line that it leaves is really kind of jagged in Inkscape. If you would do the same thing in Illustrator, it would automatically smooth things. So that's a significant difference. They call the pen tool a Bezier curve tool in Inkscape, but it functions very much the same way. You can click around a shape. Then usually my next step is to smooth all those nodes, and that's actually easier here. If I get my node tool and I select the whole shape, I can just hit this smooth once and it does them all. This actually requires a two-step process in Illustrator. I use the image trace function all the time to turn a clean black and white piece of clip art into a vector drawing. This is a lot more complicated when you're starting with a color image. Inkscape has this import icon that lets you open up your files and select your picture. You answer a few questions about how you want it to be processed, and then you can place it in your drawing. Now, using Adobe, I would be doing this in Photoshop because that's the image processing software. But all of that functionality, look at all these filters that are available inside Inkscape for managing images. And you can use a series of those to come up with a black and white version like this. And then you can use the right-click menu, pull up Image Trace, and there's all the same very complicated set of decisions you can make about how to trace it. Uh, it's as powerful as what you have in Illustrator, but in this particular case, it's no better with the result. Both of them come up with an image trace you can't really work with. There's way too much noise. I ended up having to use the pen tool to recreate this drawing but give it a clean piece of black and white clip art and it can do an excellent job as can Illustrator. So it's going to trace around the black lines here. You can set the thickness of the line. I do one point, but some laser cutters, for example, need 0 .001. You're using the same fill and stroke window to set the fill color and the color of the line. Now Illustrator would hide the original image, but here I'm just going to select it and pull it to the side so you can see the traced image and then I take out the fill. Usually my next step is to ungroup it, but that option's not available here. I have to go into Path and say Break Apart. This allows you to edit the trace drawing. I work with layers a lot in my drawing, but in Inkscape you have both objects and layer windows. So each one of these pieces of this image trace drawing I just did each one of them is an object, and I can turn the visibility on and off to see which is which. In Illustrator, these would be in the layer window itself. I can create layers. It always has layer 1, but I can add a new layer by hitting this plus button. I can name it. And then if I want to get something on that layer, I can select it, do a right-click menu, pick the Move to Layer, and pick the layer I want it to go to and now I can manage the visibility of that as well from the layer window. Finally, when you get a drawing you want to use, you have to either export or save your results. If you hit the export icon, you get this export window, and you can see it's really about images. If you want a drawing to drive something like a laser cutter, you have to use the Save As function, and this drop-down shows you all the many options you have for how to save it. So for example, an SVG is a good way, a good file type for driving a laser cutter. So there you have it, a very quick comparison between Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and Inkscape. And if I had to summarize it, I would say that while the user interface is maybe a little slicker on the Adobe products, all the functionality you need is there in Inkscape and it's free. And in fact, there are a few things that Inkscape is actually easier to use 
than Adobe. So it's a great design tool for makers and especially for makers on a budget. I have a lot of other videos that have helpful tips for makers. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.